Okay, we're going to continue looking at the final exam review for Math 1033. The next group of videos I want to show you are the answers to questions 4, 5, and 6. So if you'll take out your review, you can follow along. All right, come with me. Whoops, come with me to the paper. All right. Let's find the correct question here. Okay, this is question number 4. You're asked to perform this division. Notice the numerator is already in scientific notation, the denominator is already in scientific notation, and you're asked to go ahead and perform the division and write your final answer in scientific notation. The way I like to teach my students to do this problem is to basically split it into two parts. Do the arithmetic. 8.4 divided by 2 would become 4.2 times. Now do the algebra. And remember when we're dividing and the bases are the same, you leave the base alone and you subtract exponents, starting with the top. 15 minus a negative 6, and it's very important. So we have 4.2 times 10 to the and 15 minus a negative 6, minus a minus becomes a plus. 15 plus 6 is 21. And I'm left with the answer 4.2 times 10 to the 21st power. And we're done. The reason the answer is in scientific notation, the first part is already between 1 and 10, and the second part is a power of 10. So we're finished. Question number five is a geometry question, and it asks us to find the area of a square if one side of the square has length 2 A, B, C, D. Now, remember just with a simple problem, if I gave you a square and I told you that each dimension was 3, then to get the area, you're going to multiply 3 times 3 which is going to give me nine square units, whatever, square inches, square feet, square miles. So in this particular problem, and here's a good key to remember, if you're finding the area of a square, to find the area, which we'll call A, you take the length of one of the sides, which is 2ABCD, and you square it. You raise it to the second power. So. When you square everything in here, you get 4, a squared, b squared, c squared, d squared. And you should always give the correct units for your answer. This would be square units. For example, square feet, square inches, square miles. Okay? And problem number 6 asks us to find the volume of a cube. Now, picture a cube. You know, Picture a three-dimensional box. If I want to find the volume of that cube, I take the lengths of one of its sides, and remember what cubing means in algebra, raise it to the third power. So to find the volume of this cube, we're going to take 7xyz and raise that the length of that one side, or edge, to the third power. We're going to get 7 to the 3rd, x to the 3rd, y to the 3rd, z to the 3rd. And let's see, 7 to the 3rd power, we've got 7 times 7, let me do some scratch work up here, 7 times 7 is 49, times 7, let's see what we get, 7 times 9 is 63, so there we go. Okay, even without a calculator, isn't that good? So we have volume is 343 x cubed, y cubed, z cubed, and my final answer is going to be in cubic units. And we're done.